Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and today I'm going to be painting Iron Man from Marvel United in an illustration based comic style. Basically I'm going to be using the card art from the game Marvel United as my reference. And it's going to be a departure from my normal approach to comic style. There's really no black lining here at all. It's going to be a unique take. Lots of big chunky colors, almost cell shaded. Let's check it out. So as mentioned, I'm going to be trying to match that card art as much as possible. For the reds, I'm going to be using P3 Amethyst Rose with a highlight of P3 Kato Red Base. The highlight above that will be some P3 Inferno Orange. And then I'll go even further with just a little bit of P3 Moro White. For the gold parts of Iron Man's armor, I'll be using P3 Hearthfire, highlighting that with P3 Sulfuric Yellow, and going a little bit further again with P3 Moro White. Now looking at the card art, there's a couple different shades of blue going on. It actually starts with a fairly dark blue around the arc reactor. I'm going to use Signar Blue Highlight for that. And then everything else is basically just lighter and lighter shades of the same blue. So I'm going to just achieve that by mixing that blue with, you guessed it, P3 Moro White. Now the lining and deep shadows like under the shoulder pad here are a little bit off black. They're not quite that dark. I'm going to try replicating all of those with some P3 Coal Black. Coal Black is a nice off black, just a little hint of turquoise in it, gives it a little bit of a blue green feel. I think it's going to work perfect for this. And when I'm working on the finest lines, I'm going to add a little bit of Liquitex Flow Aid to it as well. So one thing you've probably noticed is my primer job on this looks really patchy. What ended up happening is I used a rattle can outside on a really sunny day and when I brought the model back inside I noticed there was some parts especially on the underside of the model that just didn't have very good coverage so I went back over those spots with a gray brush on primer but of course it doesn't blend into the rattle can primer very well so it just looks a little bit patchy doesn't really affect the outcome of the paint job at all now I'm getting started here with a base coat of p3 amethyst rose and this is going on almost all of the armor and I'm trying to avoid the parts that should be golden blue but when I'm doing my first base coat, I like to give myself permission to be a little bit sloppy with it. It just makes things a little bit faster. It's one of those situations where it's easier to fix a mistake than it is to avoid making it. Now, we don't really have reference art for Iron Man's back as far as Marvel United goes. We have a lot of illustrations of the character from the front, and that's it. So I'm going to just kind of make it up based on how the armor's patterned on the front. That's going to be the same with pretty much every Marvel United character. We're making up about half the model. Now with this color, P3 Amethyst Rose, I'm generally looking at two coats for good coverage, especially over the areas where I've got the gray brush on primer. If I had used a white primer all the way around, I'd probably be getting better coverage, but it also makes the model a lot harder to read on video because the white tends to wash out a little bit. Now before I do anything else with the red parts of the armor, I'm going to base coat all of the gold aspects with P3 Heartfire. I keep calling it P3 Hearthfire, which makes sense to me, but that's not what it's called. If you hear that, I'm talking about Heartfire. I'm starting with Iron Man's visor because it's the easiest part to identify and work on. You know, there's little gold areas around the armor, like under the armpits and so on, that are a little bit more obscure, but the visor's pretty straightforward. Now, P3 Heartfire is a little bit on the translucent side, especially compared to Amethyst Rose. It's going to take you probably three or four coats to really build up good coverage. And that's okay. Yellow paints aren't really known for their opacity. It's just one of those things as a hobby, so you just kind of have to push through. There are some things that can help, like using a off yellow base coat, such as like a Citadel Scrag Brown. But ultimately, you're still looking at building colors up on top of more colors, and it does just take time. Once the yellow base coats are down, I'm going back in with Amethyst Rose and just cleaning up any areas where either the red isn't covering well enough or I can still see a little bit of the primer showing through, or where I've made a little bit of a mistake and just got a little bit of yellow outside the margins where the yellow should be. You know, it's said that no plan survives contact with the enemy, and here we are, my painting plan went right out the window. I had planned on Heartfire being the darkest of the yellows, and instead found it was probably much closer to my highlight. So instead what I'm using here is P3 Mediocre. And I'm using that to paint in the sort of reflected shadow shape. 
I'm using the card art as a reference here. These are not shadows in the traditional sense. They're not being caused by any one thing. It's just an illustrated non-metallic metal kind of effect. It gives the illusion of light sources and objects being reflected without having to identify what those light sources and objects actually are. By the way, if you're a patron of mine, don't forget you get access to the companion PDF for this video as well as the raw 4K video that I work from. If you're not a patron, you can fix that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Up next, I'm going to add highlights to the gold using P3 Sulfuric Yellow. Sulfuric Yellow is a nice, bright, slightly desaturated yellow, blends really well into white, and just makes a really, really good high point here. So these bright yellow highlights are basically doing two things. The first thing they're doing is really defining the shape of each of these panels, grabbing the outlines, and just kind of acting as a general edge highlight from a more traditional tabletop style of painting. The second thing they're doing is creating these points of reflection, and that's what these two sort of lines right over the eye are, for example, this one I'm painting right now as well. They're the idea that light is glinting off the surface. It's what makes it feel metallic. Thankfully, it's not something you have to really put a lot of creative juice into either because it comes right from the card art. Now, I don't have any reference for the back of Iron Man, so what I'm doing is just keeping the bright point to the top of any panel and throwing the occasional streak in it to kind of keep that same look and feel of reflected light. So I'm going to finish up the gold by taking the highlights just a little bit further with some P3 Mora White. And the Mora White highlights are really going to follow the Sulfuric Yellow highlights and just be a little more tightly focused, a little bit smaller. The Mora White highlights are going to be the brightest points of reflection at, you know, the corners of the different pieces of the armor. And a very thin line will be used once in a while to sort of accent those reflected lines I painted earlier. Now there's a few spots here where I add a little more Mora White than I would like. I'll come back in later with some Sulfuric Yellow and just kind of push it into the edges of the Mora White and just kind of narrow it down a little bit. After looking at the model for a little bit, I decided that the shadows were a little too prominent, so I'm coming back in with a little bit more P3 Heartfire and just expanding that area a little bit, pushing the shadows back just a little. Especially on the visor, it's a really obvious large detail. I'm going to do the same in just a moment here with the sulfuric yellow as well. Just kind of expand it out on the head a little bit, so I'm just pushing the shadows down. I'm a big fan of this style of painting where I let myself make mistakes, you know, maybe don't get the proportions right between the highlights and the shadows, and come back and tweak them later. You know, nothing is set in stone here. You can always fix paint with more paint. There's no reason not to let yourself try something and then fix it if you don't like it. That said, I'm pretty happy with the gold now. Let's move on to all the blue details. So I'm going to be using P3 Signar Blue Highlight for the base coat on all the blue details. So that's going to be the big energy plume coming out of his boots, the arc reactor, his eyes, and the repulsor in his left hand. Now, thankfully, Signar Blue Highlight is much more opaque than Amethyst Roses or any of the yellows I've been working with. So this isn't going to take nearly as long as base coating the red or working on the gold did. When you're base coating the energy plume here, there's a lot of little crevices to get into. You want to make sure you don't miss any of those. Now here I've mixed a little bit of P3 Mora White into the Signar Blue highlight to make an even lighter blue. I'm going to repeat this process a few times and basically just keep bumping up the value of these highlights until they're really glowy. I'm going to start with the Arc Reactor and the Repulsor. His eyes and the energy coming out of the boots I'll handle later. I've gone ahead and added even more white to the mix. It's more white than blue at this point. I'm using that to create some really focused point highlights here. Now, Iron Man's eyes are a little bit tricky because they're very deeply recessed, which means there's a lot of natural shadow there and they're hard to reach. But you also want them to be one of the glowiest points on the model, and those kind of don't work together. So my process here with the eye was to base coat it with Signar Blue Highlight, then try to paint just the inside center of the lens with first a light blue and then white and then underline the eye where it comes out to meet the cheek with a light blue white mix again. And the idea is that that should make it look like it's casting a little bit of glow down. I think I got it. 
So now I'm painting the rocket exhaust coming out of his boots and I'm using again my mix of roughly 50-50 white with Signar Blue highlight. And I'm basically gonna paint that entire little, you know, energy blast, plume, rocket exhaust, whatever you wanna call this. Basically, it's all gonna get this lighter color. And my process here is I'm gonna basically work the colors from the lightest towards Iron Man and work them out darker towards the outside edges. So I'll have a couple different layers of blue going on that just kind of fade from the middle out. From there, I added more white into the mix. It's almost an off-white now. It's much less blue than it was before. And I'm using this for the exhaust directly from the boots. There's also a tiny bit of the blowback where the exhaust hits the ground right around here that I want to highlight as well, just basically getting a gradient from darkest to lightest. There's sort of three layers there. And now going to straight more white, I'm going to make it brightest right by the boots. At this point, I want to start to add a little bit of a texture almost to this. So I'm painting the white in in straight lines and then just making it really bright around the bottom of the boots. I'm kind of doing, you know, these little linear tapers and then a bit of a fade as well. Now with the colors I've already used, I'm basically gonna work backwards and highlight up the edges of each of the previous areas. So taking that lighter blue I mixed up for the direct boot exhaust, I'm using that now to pick out the edges of the mid-tone blue. And I'm gonna repeat that again, taking the mid-tone blue and using it to pick out the edges of the darkest blue. Now you can see I'm being pretty broad with these strokes. I wouldn't really call this an edge highlight. It's more just creating a two color transition. Finally, I finished up the exhaust effect by grabbing a little bit of a lighter blue, just mixing a tiny, tiny bit of Moro white in there and just grabbing that outside edge all the way around and a few of these tiny little points on the flares where it just kind of leaves the base a bit. Now I'm gonna be working on the red aspects of Iron Man's armor using P3 Kato Red Base. Now I am using the card art for reference here, but basically this is a pretty traditional sort of top-down highlight. I'm focusing the lighter red towards the top of any body panel, with a little bit of an exception given for edge highlighting where I grab the bottom edge. This is pretty typical of almost any just tabletop gaming paint job where you're just doing you know some brighter points and some edge highlighting. And I like to kind of think of this as a you know, a noonday sun on an overcast day where it's just coming from above and it's not really harsh or direct. Now Iron Man's right shoulder here is almost horizontal, so I'm kind of doing the highlight all the way around it evenly and leaving a little bit of the middle as the darker point. And really that's more of a concession to the sort of illustrated style we're going for where lights and shadows don't necessarily have to come from real places. Now Iron Man's helmet, we can follow the card art a little bit more closely because we have a lot of good reference there. What I'm really trying to do is keep the sides, which are almost vertical, keep them a little bit on the darker side, keep the brighter color to the top of the head, and then we'll do even more highlighting beyond this, up into an orange. Now where the side of the helmet and the top of the helmet meet, there's not like a panel line or anything there. It's just a pretty distinct angle in the side of his head. And I'm using that as a guide. So I want to again keep the, you know, the sides of the head a little bit darker. It really just accents that change in the geometry of the head. So now I'm on to my second to last highlight using P3 Ember Orange. And this is gonna take the form of a semicircle, more or less, on the top of Iron Man's head, showing sort of the brightest point of reflection. A couple little points here and there around the armor just to really accent the geometry, kind of pick out a sharp edge and so on. And then some really sharp reflected points on his torso as well. So here on the shoulders and on the chest, I'm creating these sort of like linear reflections. And this is, again, a concession to the illustrated art style. They're a sort of reflection that, you know, it gives the impression of light in the environment, but without a particular source. And this sort of generalized light and shadow that comes from nowhere and everywhere at the same time is a really common way of showing metal as a texture in comic and illustration kind of mediums. 
where you don't have the ability to have, you know, true natural reflections. You don't necessarily want to draw mirrors of everything around the character all the time. And one of the things I've come to realize while teaching comic style painting and learning about it myself is that treating metals as a texture is a really unique and interesting way of approaching non-metallic metal because it's not really talked about outside of this little scope. You know, normally people talk about things like zenithal light and ambient light sources and I just throw all that out the window because it doesn't particularly pertain to the medium here. The end result is that you end up with a non-metallic metal surface that is very recognizably metal, but without the sort of mental workload that comes with sort of a traditional approach to doing non-metallic metals. It also helps that in the scope of Marvel United and Marvel Crisis Protocol, we're working with very recognizable characters. Anyone looking at Iron Man knows his suit is metallic. Just, there's a mental recognition that just happens. We don't have to convince someone it's not spandex. Now I'm going to finish off Iron Man's red armor with some P3 Moro White, and this is basically meant to represent the glossiest, sharpest, purest reflection on the armor. It's the thing that makes it look shiny. This sort of C-shaped highlight that's following the existing orange highlight around his head is lifted right from the card art. I didn't have to think about this one at all. It's just implementing what's already there. I'm going to pull that same highlight into the faceplate just a little bit more so the whites just kind of line up and match a little bit better. And then move on to adding some highlights to the torso. And these again just kind of follow the highlights we've already created. I'm just going to add a little spike of white to the left of these orange highlights that I've already added. And then flaring that out along any sharp lines in the model that it meets. So in this case going across the top of the chest. I'm also now going to just kind of carry that line through the smaller little plates on his belly. And this is just a couple, almost just white dots. The top one's like a letter T, but the rest of them here are just almost dots just kind of going through those little tiny armor plates. Now these white highlights are pretty small and pretty focused, and they're also pretty sparse. We're not adding them to every single panel of the model, and not nearly with the same kind of volume that the other highlights had. So this step actually goes pretty fast, because you also have to ignore about half the model. Anything that's not really facing up or out and isn't already really well highlighted doesn't need this highlight. Now on his left shoulder, I decided to try and throw the highlight on the lower edge, and that's because the upper edge is right beside the head, so I thought it might be a little bit shadowed there. But also because I wanted to add a little bit of a sense of motion, it kind of creates the idea of motion lines of that arm kind of reaching forward. On his right leg here, the white highlight just takes the form of one continuous thin line running across the top of the leg. And again, I'm going to flare it just a little bit where it meets some of the lines or the panels in the armor, just to kind of give the impression of the fact that there are sharp edges there. On the back of the helmet, I'm basically reversing the highlight from the front of the helmet, so I'm coming to the bottom edge of these two panels here and just throwing a quick kind of like a corner highlight in. And again, this is really just to accent the geometry of the helmet. On the right arm, I'm basically treating it the same way as the right leg, so we're going to have one continuous line moving through all of the forearm and the hand as well. And again, just kind of flaring when it hits a sharp edge. Now, as I was looking at the helmet, I felt that this corner of this top panel of the helmet was a little little bland, so I decided to throw just a little white highlight here in the corner, kind of reminiscent of the ones in the back of the helmet, and pull that same highlight just down into the visor, so it looks like it belongs there. Now, oddly, it kind of lines up right here with this little one I already had created, sort of on the nose, for lack of a better term. So it really looks like it belongs there. So lastly here I want to do some panel lining and also pick out the interior parts of the armor so that's like some areas around the neck, under the arms and so on. And I'm going to use P3 Coal Black for that. On a more typical comic style miniature I would be using Black Magic or some other black ink for this step, but to match the illustrated style of the card art for Marvel United I wanted a little bit of a softer color. And Coal Black is just off black enough that it's not going to have that really really deep harsh transition that a true black would. So the details I'm focusing on here are sort of the internal parts of the Iron Man armor. So that's sort of the, the joints inside the elbow, the shoulders, the neck, the hips, 
all those areas where it's sort of like that almost like that accordion style material that sits underneath the armor and then of course just general panel lining following the lines that are provided by the sculpt now here i'm also doing a little bit of a shadow on the underside of the eyes or the eyebrow ridge rather and that's just so from certain angles you get a nice little crisp line there it's pretty subtle and i decided not to bring it to the bottom of the eye because i want them to remain glowing but with that steep overhang i wanted to feel like there was a bit of a shadow Now that's all the big bulky areas and the major panel lines on the helmet done. For the other panel lines all around the model, I'm going to thin down some coal black with some Liquitex Flow Aid. Now Flow Aid recommends that you thin it with water. I've always found that the amount of water I load on my brush to keep it damp is generally enough. You can add more if you feel like it. In this case, I actually added more paint because I felt like I had just over thinned it a little bit there. And I'm using a smaller, pointier brush and just letting capillary action really bring that coal black into these crevices by itself. You can see there's a couple areas here where I'm a little bit haphazard. I got a little bit of coal black onto one of the highlights there. I'll just go back in and fix it later. So with that done, the last thing I do here is just clean up the base. There's a little bit of gravel kind of around the explosion all the way around. Just hang it up with a uh, nice dark gray. And then I'm going to go around and paint the base rim with an off black using P3 Asheth Gray here if you're curious. Now you may have noticed a few little white points on the back of the rocket exhaust. That's just from friction from my hand rubbing against the model there. Just going to touch that up with a little bit of the... Signar Blue highlight with the white mixed in. It's already on my palette. And there's a little blemish here on the arc reactor. I decided while I was at this, while I was touching up the little red spot on the reactor, I was gonna brighten the whole reactor up as well. So I'm gonna come back in with a few of the mixed blues and just kind of just brighten up that whole point, make it a little more of a visual focal point. And there we go. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you do end up following it, please feel free to tag me on Instagram or Facebook. I'd love to see your work. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, do something epic. I just want to take a moment and thank everyone who has supported the creation of this video and many others over the years. My patrons over at patreon.com slash epic duck, my Twitch subscribers, and just my loyal fans. There's been a huge outpouring of support, especially for comic style painting, but just everything I do in general, there's people behind me I can't do this without you. I appreciate it so much. Everyone, your names are all over here. You know who you are. Everyone who's helped make this happen over the years, who's kept food on the table, kept the roof over my head, kept the lights on, kept the stream going. I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you want to join the flock, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Five bucks a month gets you access to some behind the scenes stuff, gets you the unedited versions of these videos, PDF guides, and my eternal gratitude. Thank you so much.